Hey family, uh, this is uh, your brother Kazaki, and uh, I have a thought on my mind here as I am out and about on this hot Sunday afternoon that uh, the world has taken to uh, show appreciation to the fathers of the, of the world. And so I want to, uh, not that I celebrate Father's Day, but there's nothing wrong with giving honor to our mothers and fathers. So uh, this is just a, a um, reflection. So first and foremost, I want to uh, show my appreciation and my thanks to my Heavenly Father who made it possible for me to be uh, uh, born in this world through a physical father who um, is no longer with us. He passed from this life back in 1990, and uh, my father has been a great influence. Um, I see a lot of myself in my father. I see a lot of uh, when it comes to things as far as to spirituality, when it comes to things as far as to uh, my level of seriousness and also my humorous side. My dad had a humorous side, so I wanted to just kind of um, give a, a, a reflection to that from my father. And also, I never had the opportunity to, to learn or to, or to know my, my father's father. I met him uh, probably three or four times before he passed in 1980. And uh, so I just wanted to kind of give a little um, thanks to him for bringing my father into the world. And, and then also his father, which I just come to recently discover, John Cotton of Kent County, and uh, never actually heard anything about him, just reading about him in the um, uh, census, the various census records, and just by research. And, and uh, so that's as far as I can go on my father's side. Now on my, um, my mother's side, I did have the privilege of knowing my, my grandfather, my mother's father, um, Grandpa Walter Howard, and I've known him to be a very spiritual man, one who uh, wasn't religious and he didn't go to to church, but he spent his uh, his days when he uh, was home in, in quiet time listening to uh, various spiritual programs and reading out the Bible and things of that nature. And he planted a, a good seed in my mother and in my. Uh, my aunts and uncles. One of my uncles who, who passed um, sh shortly after my father passed, um, he was a minister. He was Walter Howard Jr. And uh, he's a call home a boy. So just, just reflect and remember him. And also um, on my on my uh, grandmother's side, on my father's side, um, never had an opportunity to meet my great grandfather on his side, but come to to know him through my study of my genealogy uh, grand granddad Charlie Wicks so I'm just uh, just being grateful and I just want to say as I close out to those of you that have fathers that are living or grandfathers or someone in your life that's living take that time to appreciate them I know you you might feel like your father's not worth a dime or nickel or whatever <laughs> But uh, at least he's alive, and you can actually. This is a good opportunity. I, I would. This is what I would do on Father's Day if your father's alive, and you may have had, have had or have issues with your father. I would go and make a phone call, and, and and just take some time to just go and just open up and just release those things that are in your heart. And you'll be surprised that when you do that, when you release those things that are in your heart to that person that's living, or even either if the person is dead. Because uh, all of the male figures in my life, father figures, have gone on. They, they have left this life. Um, but if you have a, a family member, a father, that um, you feel wronged you or just wasn't there for you or didn't, didn't implant the things that you felt that you needed, this is your opportunity to release that to them by having a conversation uh, between you and them spiritually. And I'm not saying that you're talking to a dead person. Don't get that wrong. But what I'm saying is you're releasing this, this spiritual energy that you, you have uh, held inside of you for years and years and years uh, down 
through the way. And you release that energy that you have in you, that anger, bitter, or ill feelings that you may have that you may have towards your father, you'll find out that you'll feel a hundred thousand percent better. And I know there were some things that I felt that I needed from my father and I was, I was angry with him for a number of years. But after releasing those things and understanding that he did the best he could do with what he had and what he knew, and a lot of times we have fathers that are in this world and they're doing the best that they can do with what they know, you know. And some of some of the fathers, you know, don't know how to deal with life, so they've gotten themselves caught up with, with drugs and, and, and various substances that have controlled their lives, okay, and they have spit majority of uh, many of their adult years being strung out on that substance so if you have a father that have has had that happen in their life it's a good opportunity for you to 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 have a conversation with that father you know and don't start off that conversation by attacking your father and saying you was a no good deadbeat dad <laughs> i mean all of that may be true but what i'm saying is uh, I want you to understand that whatever it is that your father um, had to go through or was addicted to, whatever substance he was addicted to, that was how he how was how he chose to deal with the pressures of life. Now I'm not saying it's right, but what I'm saying is this this is what he did to choose to deal with those those uh, issues of life, and so. If you, you have a father that has not been there for you or have not done anything for you and they're still alive or if they're dead, like I said, take this time to release yourself spiritually from the press, oppression that you have internally so that you can live and go forward and live the life that you uh, des deserve to live and to have going forward. And with that said, I want to say to all of you, have a blessed day. Until next time, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.